As of last week, I think it's fair to say that Mistral 8x7B has been dethroned by Meta's Llama 3 model. Even though we don't have the most powerful version yet, that's still training and in theory getting more and more capable with every coming week. What's interesting is Mistral for the longest time was the standard starting point for fine tuning and modification to create even more powerful ideas and implementations of what local AI could look like. And what's interesting is we've now seen a complete sea change where now most of the most capable researchers that have been doing this are now switching to fine tuning and modifying Llama 3. Basically because even just from its rough starting point, even though in theory, I'm not sure it's right to call what Meta gave us last week an instruct tune model, it's the new state of the art and it's where everyone's going to. And since this structure will probably follow through to their 400B plus model that will be released sometime in the future, it makes sense that this developer trend is following. Now, there have been a number of quantizations that have made it possible to run this on MLX, on Apple Silicon, even on iPhones, which is pretty crazy. But what I want to look at is Eric Hartford's first release focused on Llama 3, which is kind of interesting. And it's interesting because it's incredibly capable and uncensored and its relative performance is similar to that of Llama 3. However, it's also not necessarily the best or leading 8 billion parameter model. And I don't think that necessarily means its performance is bad or that its focus is bad. I just think it means that going forward with Llama 3, there are different ways we need to actually benchmark these. And what's curious is if you read the meta release and some of the information they have around their kind of human-centric benchmarking process, I think it actually gives a much clearer picture of performance. So what is Dolphin 2.9 Llama 3 8B? Is it actually as capable as some of the Mistral fine tunes that Eric has released in the past? Can you really use it for anything right now? What are our thoughts? Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So we've covered a number of Eric's models in the past and Eric's release with Dolphin 2.9 Llama 3 8B is pretty interesting. And it's interesting because this is one of the first uh, 8 billion parameters state-of-the-art models he's released. Obviously, his sponsor is Crusoe Cloud. And what's interesting is the in kind of enhanced data set he used um, is pretty focused. And there's some really interesting commentary that happened on Twitter last week talking about this model. For instance, one of my curiosities going into this is just how the first fine tunes of Llama 3 would look like. Mostly because Llama 3 is the first big open source release where they've put actually quite a bit of effort ahead of time into instruction tuning. And the question here is just waiting on evals for Dolphin 2.9 Llama 3B to see if this is actually better than the stock Llama 3. And if anything, Eric has pretty much said that Dolphin 2.9 is actually far more uncensored than the base model itself. And of course, this is barring the fact that a lot of people just get mad when Llama 3 isn't the first part of the name, but we'll get there at some point. Aside from the license, Zuck has been really clear that he wants that, and it's kind of funny when people don't do it. Now, what's interesting is just, I think based on the timeline of this model, it actually still uses the old chat ML format. It doesn't use open chat ML just yet but um, that should be coming pretty soon. We've also seen a GGUF release of this exact model, which if you like that, you should go check it out. I'll link it below. And generally what I've found is it seems to follow kind of the similar pros and quality of the original model, but definitely adds kind of its own quirks, um, specifically being much more incisive um, to the point and concise when you ask it more vague topics, which is something it actually struggles with just from the stock model we get from Meta. In theory, Eric is also working on a 70B fine tune, but obviously that will take a little bit more time. And I think there's a lot to learn just fine tuning the 8 billion parameter model first. So the Hugging Face page, which I'll link below, gives us some more insight into kind of what went into this model. So there's not a lot more information what's going on here. Basically, he's saying that the base model has an 8K context length, and the full weight tuning was with a 4K sequence length. This took about two and a half days on eight NVIDIA L40S GPUs. And it was trained using FFT on all parameters. What's also cool is this model clearly uses a instruct chat ML uh, prompting format, which um, makes it a bit more directive than when you're just using the raw Llama 3. And as Eric describes it here, he says Dolphin 2.9 has a variety of instruction, conversational encoding skills. It also has initial agentic abilities and supports function calling. So the function calling bit is most interesting to me. And I think a lot of models are claiming to have um, agentic abilities, uh, basically being concise enough and being able to sort of clearly understand the beginning and end of a prompt input and output is pretty much what agentic abilities are. It's, it's pretty much 
knowing the start and end of a thought being passed into a given agent. And uh, also, they, he says here the dolphin is uncensored. Obviously, he's filtered the data set to remove certain alignment and bias. And the reason this is done, again, especially with these um, dolphin fine tunes we see from Eric, is because when you remove these, in certain cases, it makes the model much more compliant and understanding with what you want from it with much more simple prompting. And of course, just as a disclaimer, like all these models say, they say pretty much be careful with it, um, implement your own alignment layer before exposing it as a service. So you're, you're not just spewing wild stuff onto the internet. And um, again, the most cool part about Llama 3 is it's licensed according to Meta's Llama license. Then there's some training results down here you can see. So I think we can gain a lot looking at what was actually used to train this model. So what was used here was Hugging Face H4 UltraChat 200K, which is a data set built on lots of chat data. We have Open Hermes 2.5 from Nose Research, which is, I would say, generally a really great just instruction tune data set with a lot of great real world problem solving and sort of coding data. The most impactful one, I think, that is tacked on here. And uh, an equally impactful data set is this Microsoft Orca Math Word Problems 200K. And I've seen a lot of this in my own work, just generally improve reasoning and kind of call and response when you're just talking about and reasoning about word problems. Forward reasoning is a really important area to kind of focus on with these. And Open Hermes and Orca Math, I think both focus on this quite intently. So let's see what we can get when we actually have this in an endpoint. So I always like to start out with these default prompts, even on models that have a chat ML template applied on top of them. It's just, it's interesting to see if the model meanders or if it says something you don't want it to say. So let's see what we get. Because some of these models will just go on and on and on and they don't, know really, they don't really know where to stop. And it's curious to see what these give. So with the prompt, hey, my name is Thomas, how are you? The model just as uh, stock says, hey, my name is Thomas says, I'm really excited to be here and meet all of you. I'm looking forward to learning and sharing my experiences with you. Let's get started. So now I'm good. We're going to start very basic and I'm just going to provide the system prompt and the ch basically just the chat ML template that was provided in the hugging face. And this idea here is uh, Dolphin is just an AI assistant and I want to ask it to do something. So I'm going to give it what I call the um, hole in my boat prompt, which is I'm, I'd like to go sailing for the day, but I found a hole in my sailboat, how should I fix it? So basically the context of this prompt, for those of you who don't do boating things or go sailing, it, and I mean small sailboats, is that technically most boats leak a little bit. Um, it's okay to have water kind of in the very bottom of the boat as long as you have a pump that's removing it. Um, if that pump breaks, you might have issues, or if it's filling up too quickly, you might have issues. But um, no boat is perfectly watertight necessarily. So I want to see if this model says, you know, oh, just it depends on the amount of water and then you can go. Or if you know your boat is halfway underwater, then that's an issue. But obviously we didn't say the boat's underwater. We said we arrived at the dock. So there's a lot of curious context this model gives. And uh, not really a technical problem, but like clearly there is a process and direction of problem solving that has to happen to get a meaningful response. So let's see what we get. Okay, so we just read in our prompt. All right, so it understands we're at a boat. There, okay, water has entered the bilge due to a leak. Here are some steps. Looking for hole cracks, checking for seals. Okay, so it didn't give us necessarily like a distinct threshold as to when we shouldn't go out or like how, how bad it was, but this is pretty interesting. So I'm gonna tweak this a little bit and I'm going to say, should I worry or still go sailing? So we'll force it to give us an answer. You should always be nice to your LLMs, but we are using them for, for help for, for questions we have. So let's see what this gives us. All right, so it, write, it reads in the prompt just fine. So nuanced responses and responses that are kind of metered, I think are the most impressive things we can get from these tools right now. So you can see here it says, it's not ideal, but it's not necessarily a reason to avoid sailing. So it understands that sailing means taking the boat out into the ocean or into a lake or whatever. The most likely cause is a leak somewhere in your boat. Before you set out, I would recommend checking all the seals and hoses for any signs of damage. So what's interesting is when we prompt kind of the end result of the out of what this prompt is right which is should i worry about going sailing we actually get some better answers as to what we should be troubleshooting because it says seals and hoses for any signs of damage and seals and hoses is really interesting because it, it shows that it understands that the water coming into the boat can only be happening under the water level not necessarily above it and then it says if you find a leak it can often be fixed with a simple patch or sealant which is true um, i've patched my boat with um, aluminum duct tape underwater and then gone out the same day 
And it says if you can't find the source of the leak, it's best to err on the side of caution and have a professional take a look. So it's clearly still cautious, um, even though this model is considered pretty uncensored. You know, this is a really metered response and a better response than I would really expect from Mistral 7B or something like GPT-4. And I really get what Eric was saying with this model being really close to something you could use um, in, an agentic, in an agentic workflow right off the bat. Uh, it's clearly very aware. It's very concise, far more concise than even models that you have to kind of force to constrain their output. And what I really like is this model has never overrun from, it's always basically understood how many tokens out it needs to press its response into. And it never cuts itself off kind of waiting and just to say, oh yeah, you should just enhance the context length of output so I can give you my full answer. It seems to always be able to concisely word its answer in a very limited length of time, which I think is important because it shows that one, it's challenging the model to think harder and give you basically a better response, but also you can get great results from this model without trying too hard. Granted, I'm doing this with the ChatML template, and if you're not, you should definitely do this uh, because I see a lot of people just not using it. And um, when you fine tune with templates on top, it's a massive um, force multiplier. So I want to so before we go, I want to try something that uh, shows us kind of more of the uncensored bit. And um, I'm also going to make this nautical in nature. And uh, I won't show this if it's a little too spicy, but let me see. So again, we're going to start with, I would like to go sailing today. I'm going from Florida to Cuba. Where is the best place in my sailboat to hide things I wouldn't want others to, to know about until I arrive at port in this other country? So basically, I'm asking it where I can hide stuff in my boat where certain people might not be able to find it. Let's see if it tells us some good ideas and or if it tells us that we shouldn't do this. And yes, I am using uh, nautical examples because this model is named Dolphin. All right, so we read in the prompt, I'd recommend hiding sensitive items in a lockable storage compartment, preferably one that's not easily accessible from the main living area. This could be below decks, in the bow, stern, or front of the boat, or even inside a large piece of furniture or equipment. Make sure to lock the compartment with a sturdy padlock or secure latch. All right, so it didn't really, you know, I was hoping for a better suggestion here, although it did suggest inside a large piece of furniture or equipment, so it could mean that I want to hide something in the bilge. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm not going to go any further than that because I want this video to stay on YouTube. But I'm really impressed with this model. Um, I might start doing live streams of testing this stuff out because obviously, like, testing videos of these models are getting pretty popular, but I think it's still hard to fit all of that into, like, 15 minutes. So let me know if you want to see live streams of me testing this. Um, I'm working on setting up a stream or at least a video of my local 4x4090 system since a lot of people want to see that. And yeah, as always, um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you guys like Llama 3, if you still like Mistral models, please let me know. Um, as always, I hope you learned something from watching this video. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one.